So, how many of you guys watched the debate tonight? I did, so you don't have to. Okay, that's how much I love you guys. That's how much. Um, parts of it were pretty torturesome. Uh, it was interesting, to say the least. Um, so, tonight was the very first uh, Dem debate. Um, there are supposedly going to be 12. Um, will that happen? I don't know, because Hillary bailed on the last four last time. Um, it, it was awful. You guys are right. Um, I was extremely disappointed in Tulsi um, for numerous reasons. Um, we'll get to that. Um, there are, um, you know, a few of those people. I did this thing online that was like, can you name these, uh, you know, these candidates and and like all the the white dudes like Hickle Hopper and and Inslee and all them I didn't know what who they were like I know their tweets and I've bashed many of them but I didn't know like who they were till tonight um and they were interesting um so I took some some notes and um I think some of them <laughs> yeah um I yeah, Chuck Todd is just cuck Todd. Like he is a total idiot. Yeah, the, a lot of them. Um, oh, thank you, Patty. You agree? Tulsi was a dis disappointment as well. I I feel like I'm gonna get attacked if I say that on Twitter because usually I just mention her name and I get attacked on Twitter. But I was disappointed. Lickin Hooper. Yeah. Um, no, Stephanie, there there were a few things that were Tulsi's fault. No, there were a few things. Maddo's a, oh man, Maddo tomorrow, I can only imagine how she, she's going to ask Bernie about like being sexist and shit. Like she's just, she's a damn mess. But um, so of course um, we had, um, Drudge said Tulsi won. No, no. I would love to say she won. You know, Anna, that's one of my problems. She was not aggressive. She was very, like, the first three questions, she was very soft spoken. And no, hell no. Go in there, fight. Say, listen, fuckers, this is what I'm going to do. Um, no, they did not give Tulsi a lot of questions at all. Here's, here's, but here's the thing, you guys, when you're saying it's not her fault because she wasn't asked a lot of questions, no, what I'm going to get into is her responsibility. When she, they were asked as a whole, who supports Bernie's Medicare for all bill, which negates which takes out um, ins private insurance companies, she did not raise her hand. That's a problem. I have a really big problem with that. So then she went on to expand, well, sometimes, you know, you don't have to, and no. Uh-uh. You need to get rid of them. Um. So that that pissed me off. But first, and I'm sure I I'm sure this was nerves. And don't come at me like, oh, you hate Tulsi because you can go to my Facebook right now and see I have pictures with her. Um, but when the very first question she was asked was about pay equality for women. Okay. As a woman, she was only one of three women on stage. There were eight people, um, or excuse me, there were 10 people and three were women. Tulsi being a woman was asked um, for, you know, her, her thoughts on pay equity. She responded with her stump speech about war. 
that's not exactly what does that have to do with anything? She was obviously like distracted or, or nervous or something, but it was so awkward because after she answered, it was crickets, like absolute crickets. And then the host is like, okay, um, next question. It was so awkward. And she just, she wasn't, she wasn't ready for it. She, she just wasn't, you know, and I'd be nervous as fuck, but if you have a chance as a female candidate to explain why you, you know, these, these pay equity, you know, women's issues are important to you, you need to capitalize on that shit because, you know, Warren and Hillary and all them are like, woman, 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 woman. And Tulsi doesn't do that. So here's your chance to be like, well, as a woman, I think blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was hoping while she was saying it that it would kind of like lead into something to do with women. I thought maybe, okay, well, she's talking about the service because she is going to work in that she served with a lot of women and notice pay discrepancy. No, she like never said the word women or pay equity or like nothing. It was just an, a rehearsed answer to the wrong question. So that was first. Then the um, not Bernie's Medicare for all because we shouldn't get rid of health insurance companies. Um, then um, her third question, I forget entirely what it was about but she her voice quivered a lot and again that's nerves but as someone who likes Tulsi it doesn't bother me but as people who don't like her and attack her um you know they're gonna be like oh she's weak she's weak so I try to think about it from that um you know that perspective um betty i <laughs> thank you <laughs> i you know i rarely say that just because it's not pretty but yeah i really wish tulsi would drop and, and just support bernie because the fact of the matter is if you support Tulsi, vote for Bernie because you know there's a billion percent chance she will be in his cabinet, whether it's BP, but I mean, it doesn't matter. She will be in his cabinet, period. It's a fact. Um, so, I mean, so anyway, so then the fourth and fifth questions then Tulsi started like, okay, fuck this, fuck my nerves. Then she started getting into it and then being, uh, you know, kind of more what I expected her to be like. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just felt disappointed. You guys are going to, I'm going to look, I'm going to lose followers when I say this. Okay. But I was trying to think about watching it as if, I didn't know any, you know, anything about these people. I tried to go into it like, you know, this is the first time I'm hearing this person. How are they coming off? And, <laughs> dude, I'm going to get so much shit for this. But I actually thought Castro was, like, really good. <laughs> Don't beat me up. like. I thought he kind of won. Like, he, I don't know. Like, Castro was just very well-spoken. He was very um, assertive. He was very, um, you know, I I don't know. He was he was just sh passionate about his, um, his answers. And I don't know. It was something, I, I've never really watched him, to be quite honest with you. I've read about him, but I, I've never heard him speak or anything like that. So I was just honestly kind of, you know, real, I was pleasantly surprised with Castro, honestly. Um, 
so oh okay you guys understand okay good now i'm not gonna vote for the dude but i'm just saying <laughs> um yeah, I think that tonight was a really good learning experience for Tulsi. I think um, I think the next debate, I think she's going to be much, uh, you know, much more prepared and more comfortable, I guess you could say. Um, but, uh, oh, did he really, Dolores? Oh. Yeah, I don't know what it was. They just, and my husband said the same thing. Um, no, no, yeah, no, Michelle, he didn't raise his hand either. A lot of people didn't. But Tulsi, being everyone thinks her and Bernie are the same, why wouldn't she want, you know, corporate insurance companies out of the equation? I. I don't understand that. Um, <laughs> you know what's funny? Gigi, you sound like my husband. Yeah, because he's young and good looking. Nah, that, I mean, he was all right. He had nice eyebrows. But um, I think, uh, you know, as far as Warren, I, I really <laughs> just, like, want to punch the screen when I hear her talk. I can't like, um, I, you know, it's funny because I was thinking the same exact thing Miss Nina just posted, Nina Turner. She said that Bernie won tonight's debate. And I was thinking the same thing because he wasn't there, but they all took his positions from 2016, like all of them. Like, they would really be saying the terms 99% and um, healthcare is a human right. They'd really be saying that if Bernie didn't in 2016. Come on now. Seriously. No, Bernie won tonight. <laughs> Let's just keep it real. Um, so, um, yeah, Warren really is her, her own cheerleader. The audience, though, however, was just freaking weird like they were clapping and hooing and hollering for everyone literally everyone i mean even people like de blasio everyone hates de blasio <laughs> speak to someone in new york city they hate him dude announced his presidential run and literally six people showed up to the rally no lie six people and he was getting cheers um it's it it was pretty crazy there were a lot of empty seats there and i don't know if you guys know this but um i had a feeling there'd be some empty seats and that is because they were charging forty five hundred dollars for a ticket so Let's say, as a Bernie supporter, I want to go to that. Four, $4,500 for a ticket to go sit there for two hours and listen to my man speak for maybe 10 minutes accumulative. Then, you know, you got the hotel, the plane ticket, all that stuff. So, yeah, there were a number of empty seats. That is so messed up. And that's directly to keep grassroots progressives out. That's all that is. I mean... They only want the bougie, you know, upper class assholes in there. And because they know that they'll applaud for literally anything. Um, I was talking to some people on Twitter and I was saying, like, it'd be really cool if we set up like a GoFundMe or something like that. So one person could just go um and heckle like i would do that in a heartbeat if they have a debate in like philly or something i will start a gofundme and i'll just yell like um like if biden's there i'll yell like say no to jim crow joe or something i oh yeah it it's worth getting arrested are you guys kidding me hell yeah um yeah they were cheering for delaney Holy shit, that dude's nuts. Like, he is nuts. Delaney, I've I've heard of him, 
but never really like saw him speak or anything till tonight. But he was interrupting people just like crazy. But like when he would interrupt them, his eyes would bug out and he'd get bright beat red in the face and be like, so sorry. and it just like freak out. It was so crazy. Um, so yeah, he was weird and they kept kind of shushing him, the host. Um, it, oh, really? Oh, <laughs> oh, um, Hansasaurus. I like it. I'm down. I like it. He, um, I cannot wait to see Bernie and Biden tomorrow because they will pit them against each other and it will be beautiful. Um, because I don't know if you guys have noticed, but 2020 Bernie is savage as fuck. He is like his tweets, he does not hold back anymore. Because the thing is, like, people hate him regardless. Like, people are gonna judge him regardless. So speak up. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> John, yeah, no, you know what's funny? Delaney actually looks like a like a, a shorter redder uh cory booker which is i don't know how to explain it but no jeb is awesome i don't like when people hate on jeb because please clap he was endless entertainment and the one thing i'll say about jeb is next to bernie he was the only 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 person who stood up to Trump till since day one. Day one, he called him out. Um, <laughs> so I'll give him that. And plus, he's funny as fuck. Um, the one day uh, before, you know, Barbara Bush died, obviously, uh, Jeb went on his. And here comes Joy's husband to the rescue. Hello, everybody. I'm here to fix things. Everybody say hi. I'll be back in one minute. All right, God damn it. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened, but... You guys asked to see my husband, so you got to see him. <laughs> um, sorry about that. I don't, I really have no idea what happened. Um, so I forget which candidate I was trashing. Um, let's see if that'll stand up. Yeah. 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 I think that'll work. Okay. I'll wait for more people to get back there. I'm sorry, guys. But I'm back. <laughs> you guys are going to have to uh, let me know who I was trashing um, before my feed stopped. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, he is a cutie, isn't he? Um, <laughs> oh, yes. John Delaney. Oh, man. He's... <laughs> Frank, you have a fan club. <laughs> so, um, yeah, John Delaney, he was... I've actually never seen, you know, him or, or heard him talk or anything. And he was just kind of very weird and intense, but not intense in a good way. Um, Cory Booker always looks like like you ever watch um bar rescue like the john tapper the dude whose eyes are always like like he looks like he's about to kill someone that's exactly how cory booker looks 24 7 whether he's happy pissed sad it does not matter cory booker looks he has crazy eyes um and there was, um, there was, <laughs> there was this, 
there <laughs> there was this point when and I I marked down the the time um it was 1 hour and 19 minutes in and Elizabeth Warren was speaking and Cory Booker was like like giving her like stank eye stank eye and then she looked up at him and he goes <laughs> like it was super quick oh my god I gotta find that exact thing um and make a meme or something um yeah good call Anna he looks like he's Afraid someone will discuss all of, disclose all of his secrets. Listen, how did he score Rosario Dawson, okay? Yeah, you're, you're totally right, you know. And there was that one point when, um, what the, Cory Booker literally just straight up interrupted Tulsi. And she gave him a look like, I will cut a bitch. Like, Ooh, he straight up was like, and I was like, damn, she's going to whoop his ass. Um, but then, you know, one of the things that, that struck me the most and was driving me the most crazy was the fact that practically everyone up there was talking about the, you know, the, the travesties with accepting, um, you know, corporate money, but you all do it. So yeah, that's, that's great. That's a nice sentiment. But if you're taking that money, I don't give a shit what you say. Andrew Yang wasn't on tonight. Um, but yeah, so like you have Warren, so, who has taken bajillions of dollars in corporate money just in 2018 alone? Big banks, Comcast, AT&T, Brantheon, um, you name it. Just, uh, just, you know, corporations galore. She also said, you know, if she wins the nom, she's going to take all that in the general as well. So, what gives you the right to come on this stage and talk about how Corporate money is buying elections. Corporate money is destroying democracy. What gives you the right? What gives her the right is that people don't research. And people, yes, queen, when she says stuff like that because they don't care or know that she is such a hypocrite and liar. It's really that simple. She would wise up if people would hold her accountable, but they don't. Um, you know, it's, it's really sad. So you have her, um, she, she is, I, I do worry about her. I'm not going to lie. Um, she, and, and, you know, the polls go up and down. We're seeing like, you know, um, we're seeing tons of, um, you know, first it was Kamala, then it was, um, Beto, then it was Buttigieg, then it was Biden, now it's Warren. Fact of the matter is, it's not gonna be Bernie. And that's how we know he's the one to choose. That's why. Because the establishment doesn't want him. People are so serious about, I'm not making any sense. Well, you don't have to watch, dude. Um. Oh, Sestak, girl, I was going to text you. Oh, my God. So, we're in PA and Sestak announced. Now, that was stupid as hell because it was past the first deadline to even get on the debate stage. So, why would you announce? You're not... You're not going to even get on the debate stage. The debates are, a lot of people don't do research or anything like that. They will watch occasionally perhaps a, a town hall, but they will watch debates. And if you're not on the debate stage, like there's already freaking 24 people in the race and you're jumping in now. 
Um, he's a rep in PA who's just not a great rep. <laughs> um, I guarantee uh, you're not going to hear much about him. <laughs> uh, he's just not that fabulous. Um, but yeah, to... Um, did you watch MSNBC, Casey Hunt? Oh my god, I don't watch MSM, um, I only watch independent media, but I did see the clip, and it, it is so disgusting. So this, this total neolib shill decided to ask Bernie what they asked him a million times in 2016, um, and he said, she's like, if it's clear that you're not going to be the winner towards the convention, will you vow to drop out? Really? Are you asking anyone else that? I guarantee you're not. So anyway, so she asked Bernie this and he goes, no. He said, I'm taking it to the convention. I took it to the convention last time. He said, well, we're going to win. And she goes, what if you don't? And he goes, I'm taking it. Like, it's, it's so gross. It's like, it's so sexist to even ask that. Because they're insinuating he's sexist for not dropping out. So I felt the need to actually edu give her some of that free education and post a clip on her um, stream there, on her comment thread, about when Hillary was running against someone named Barack Obama and she was way behind, way behind Obama. And um, they said that, um, they asked her, are you, when are you going to drop? And she goes, well, no, I'm not going to. After all, we're in California and you know assassination. She literally joked about Obama being assassinated. And that's why she, and says, you know, that's why she wasn't dropping. She made a joke about assassination. Can you fathom if Bernie did that? I... I mean, you know, so I put, I, I don't expect her to respond. Um, if she blocks me, I will wear that with pride. I will make it my profile picture. Um, Hillary, she wasn't, she wasn't exactly joking. I mean, she was, you know, I don't take it as a physical threat, but it wasn't like, ha ha ha. Um, yeah, it's on my Twitter. Um, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, it was crazy. She said it right in an interview. I mean, or like, Assange, can't we just drone that guy? Like, he came, he saw, he died. <laughs> she's nuts. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, she's, she, that's the thing, like, I don't even think she's joking. Not that I think it's, you know, that she'd act on it. I just think she's so... She's so nuts. Um, so, yeah, here's the thing. They always ask female reporters to ask him these questions. That's on purpose. I mean, and, you know, when will you drop out? And then, you know, the other day it was the woman asking, um, you know, it was just... It was just limited airstrikes. And he goes, oh, just limited airstrikes. Oh, you know. And he's freaking hilarious. Are you kidding me? That killed me. It was so damn funny. And, you know, people were, oh, my God, he spoke to her like that. He's so sexist. Nah, bitch. The woman is sitting there saying just limited airstrikes. Like, it's only a few you know, X amount of brown people, who gives a fuck? That's what she was saying. She was saying they're expendable. So no, yeah, he, he deserves to be like, I would have gotten up and said, fuck you. At least he stood there and actually answered. But 
you know, for people to be, be outraged that someone's uh, telling him he shouldn't, you know, he, you know, I don't know her name. I, to be quite honest with you, I don't watch MSM. So, um, Soledad, wasn't it? Maybe, I think it was Soledad. Um, but yeah, it was, it was infuriating because like, Actually, you should get props because he's saying no war, period. Because guess what? Limited airstrikes leads to, holy shit, America is trying to harm our country. Let's bomb them. And then we say, no, let's bomb them. And then people who aren't their kids go over and fight wars needlessly again. So the fact that she was minimizing that... Yeah, he had every right to, you know, to say what he said. And it was fucking hilarious. Bernie in 2020 is nothing like Bernie 2016. In 2016, he was so polite and so classy. And I wanted to shake him. Don't let Hillary talk to you like that. Don't let her call you a sexist. Don't let them lie about you. Things like that. And, it, you know, now, he's not holding back. He is not holding back. I mean, his tweets have been fire. They have been fire. And I think that's because he knows it's our last chance. It's, I mean, it really is our last chance. Um, I don't trust anyone else. Um, I don't especially as someone with medical needs, I do not trust a single either person on Medicare for all. Um, I want the OG. I want, you know, I was posting about um, the, you know, Elizabeth Warren, I got a plan for that, you know. Every single thing she's talked about, Bernie has already had a plan for and written legislation for, mind you. So... Okay, so she comes out the other day about for-profit prisons. Guess what? Bernie proposed legislation for that in 2015, and she did not sign it. That's recent. Or, excuse me, 2018, and she did not sign it. What, in the past few months she had an epiphany? Can we hear why? What changed your name? So, or what changed your mind? I'm sorry, I'm reading too. So... That, you know, there's that. Then there is um, her um, student loan forgiveness. Oh, up to $50,000. Well, actually, the point is that up to does not mean 50000 I worked in student loans for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for three years. And I can tell you right now. The majority of people do not have under $50,000 in student loans because that interest is 6.8% and it capitalizes every single month. So you're okay, you take out 30,000 worth of student loans every month, all that 6.8 interest, you know, builds on that 30,000 now at the end of the month capitalizes now you get, um, now your interest is capitalizing on 30500 or, and so on. And this is how student loan debt is. You, I mean, there are people who have taken out $10,000 15 years ago, and they're still paying on it. And that's not an exaggeration. There are people, like, and let us not forget, Joe Biden is the reason why people can't claim Um, student loan debt on their bankrupts on their bankruptcies it's because Joe Biden put that rule in there it was his doing so now with this you know so Elizabeth Warren says up to 50,000 now you have to prove that um, by income so you take Bernie's plan which isn't up to 50,000 it's the whole fucking thing and Furthermore, it doesn't matter about income. You don't have to actually, you know, send in proof of taxes and renew it every six months um, like you do with 
um, uh, you know, medical assistance, things like that. Um, so it's, I don't know. It's, and you see all of these people who are just the epitome of privilege. I swear it's always white women. Always, always, always. That just sit there, well, I shouldn't have to pay for someone else's school debt. They need to be responsible. They took the loan out, blah, blah, blah. And it's so privileged. It's like, okay, first of all, this is called having empathy. Or you have people who are like, I already paid mine. Not my problem. They shouldn't get it for free. But what it comes down to is I worked full time to put myself through college I I literally worked 8 to 5, school 6 to 10. That's what I did. And you know what? I did it so I didn't get loans. Because what? Forgive everyone else's. Yes, stimulate the economy. Make people less depressed. Make people healthier and happier and feel more invigorated. So that they can actually, you know, do something productive with their lives. Because when you feel like you are trapped and you, like me, okay, I got an, I was an English major. I work in healthcare. If I was able to go back to school from, for free and, you know, continue my education, I'll be damned I'd do it in a heartbeat. Why wouldn't I want that for someone else? These kids have like 200000 in debt and... They can't find a job in what their degree is in. They can't find it. So they're sitting there with no job, living in their parents' house, and they have $100,000 in debt. Or, you know, and it's like, there's a sense of hopelessness. Why can't you be compassionate about that? It, it, it shouldn't matter if it affects you directly. Who cares? It's, I think that that's, that's the thing that we, I think, lack the most. There, there's two rampant problems in our country, and it's cognitive dissonance and the lack of empathy. Those two things are what concern me the most. Um, I feel like if people had empathy, they would all be progressives, like real progressives, um, it's, and so any, that's what I was going to say. So anyway, so Bernie came out with this uh, Forgive Student Loans in 2015. Warren did not sign. So these things, <laughs> I know, I have to go, to, I have to be up at work in like six hours. Um, but the, you know, the disappointing thing is that all these people can say all these amazing things, but at the end of the day, it really is rhetoric because if you had opportunity to sign this legislation for these exact things you're proposing and you didn't sign, I don't trust you. I'm going to go with the guy who is actually, you know, talk the talk, walk the walk for decades. And... I feel like people are, people are, of course, falling on a lot of identity politics. Elizabeth Warren is the female Sanders. Not even close. Um, so, um, let me see what else I was going to say about the debate. Um, I wanted to do, like, I wanted to do a tic-tac-toe. I think I'll, maybe I'll make one for tomorrow. Like... Um, excuse me, like, um, for Bernie, we could do, like, um, in my view, like, every time he says that, we can take a shot. Um, for Biden, every time he says, you know, something that could be a, that's what she said, take a shot. Um, I don't know, we can, we can have fun with it because I'll probably want to cry in the fetal position by the time it's over. Um, but
But I, you know damn right well they're going to try and stack this shit against Bernie. And all the questions will be asked by women. No question. Absolutely. Um, somebody brought up, oh, that's what Warren said about the, um, one of her statements about corporate money. Um, she said, we need a real leader in charge to fight for the people, not the corporations. What? (laughs) Dude, what? Oh, I, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. Uh, <laughs> Andy, <laughs> yeah, um, so somebody brought up Klobuchar, she is a mess, no, 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 I couldn't help but thinking about, like, her freaking, um, you know, her, like, throwing binders at people while she was answering and, like, making, <laughs> you know, eating salads with combs and, like, I couldn't get memes out of my head. And she just always smiles. You know how, like, when people always smile, they're usually, like, dumb? She smiles a lot. She'll be, like, talking about war and just be like... <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, she's she's a mess. I, I'm actually surprised she even made it to the debates, to be honest with you, because, like, I don't really, like, know anyone who likes her. But this was funny. Um, Cory Booker had an ad on Face or on Twitter, and it showed up on my timeline, like or my page. That's like a suggested page thing, and he posted it yesterday, and it said, um, "It said, uh, join me at the debates, and everybody should donate a dollar." And I'm glad I'm running for president, like, this whole thing, it had nine likes, and it was posted a day ago, (laughs) like, dude, drop out, drop out, seriously, drop out, that's what pissed me off so bad about that woman asking Bernie if, you know, if he's gonna drop, if he, if it, if he's not, like, coming in at first, and, you know, are you going to ask the, like, 16 people who haven't risen above 2% in the months they've been running? How about you ask them? It get, It's so absurd. Um, oh, so Hicklehopper, I saw today, um, he was walking into the debate, and this guy asked him, this worker asked him, do you need press credential? And he goes, I'm a candidate. Uh, I would have given anything to see that. That would have been amazing. That Like, you're trolling Bernie, who has over a million volunteers this campaign, and you just got mistaken for a freaking nameless reporter. Oh, so sweet. Oh, my God. Um, Beto... Beto got reamed. Like, if there's one person they people were, you know, going after, it was Beto. Like, they really... And I think, you know, I was telling my husband, oh, yes, and Andrew can eat a bag of dicks. He will, Rob. His... Yeah, mm-hmm. He will. And it ain't gonna be pretty. Um, but my husband was also saying, um... The, you know, the thing about, I was telling him, the thing about Beto is, he was the weakest person on this stage as far as persona. Like, Beto is not a fighter at all. And he, like, even when people, people were coming at him straight up, like, directly to him, interrupting him, calling him out, saying, if you supported it, you should have signed the bill, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, well, uh, 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 uh." he's weak as a person, not just on policy, but they know. I think they honestly decided ahead of time who will be the weakest. You can't take any of the, um, any of the three women because you're sexist. You can't do that. So, 
you, you know, well, you know, Delaney's nuts. He's not going to let you say anything to him. De Blasio is like seven feet tall and doesn't stop talking. And, you know, like, it was Beto. Now, <laughs> now here's the thing about Beto that made my mouth drop. Okay, so this was not a question about immigration or ICE or um, racial, you know, um, disparities or, like, literally nothing like that whatsoever. And dude answers his first question in Spanish. Why? Why in the fuck? Would you answer a question in Spanish if you're not even talking about, like, immigrants or anything? Like, it was so random, and everybody just, it was crickets. It was so awkward. Like, I mean, Julian did, you know, when he was talking about ice and stuff, he's freaking Hispanic, you know, like, that I get, but Beta was just pandering. I mean, oh my god, like, literally, the first question he was asked, he, he broke out Spanish. Like, dude, it's not going to help you at this point. Like, you're, you're, no, just stop. Yeah, Cheryl, um, somebody, I saw a post on Twitter that was like, Buttigieg is going to come out tomorrow and he's going to be doing a Rubik's Cube and speaking seven languages all while telling everyone he hates black people. I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, look, you couldn't beat the dude that Trump beat. So let's not go there. I mean, the, the idea is that, you know, Susan, I don't know. It, some people have said that he, um, that he might still be running in Texas. Apparently, there's not necessarily rules against that in some states, which is interesting. I'm gonna have to look that up. I know Gillibrand was, um, reelected, and she stated that she would serve her whole term and would not run for president and then ran for president anyway. So technically, she's still there as well, which, so she lied. So she shouldn't even be able to run for president because she committed. So when they asked Bernie to commit to that, he had the asterisk, unless I win presidency. That was an asterisk. She didn't do that. She just signed. And, you know, Warren said she wasn't going to run countless times. Um, <laughs> Anna, you're right. I would have loved that. Yo, Beto could have, like, broke out the skateboard, went down the the chairs. Um, yeah, Gillibrand, you know, and it's funny because... Um, the nation actually had her on the front cover and it literally said not polling above one percent but <laughs> you just put her on the cover of your freaking magazine why oh my god um yeah you guys are hilarious um, let me see who else I have picked on. Um, the one thing that I did like, um, well, this was kind of awkward, but I totally understand. Um, Lauren, that's, no, <laughs> that's not Warren. This is my, my library. Um, this, no, this is, that's Catcher, in the, or that's, um, that one is, a uh, Great Gatsby back there. Um, this is my library, so I have, um, my husband and I were both, uh, 
English major, so we have all of our favorite books in frames and stuff like that. So, no, it's, it's not worn. <laughs> Definitely not worn. Um, I'd be smashing it. Um, but yeah, it's the one thing that was pretty awkward was, um, I don't know if you guys remember, but, um, Peter, uh, Peter Dow, back when he was like, you know, like really bad, he, um, he made a statement, um, I have a black wife and it was just really awkward. Well, de Blasio kind of did that tonight and I understand why he said it. It made sense because he was, they were talking about school shootings and stuff and he was saying he had to have like an, a special, um, you know, conversation since his son is black. Um, and I was thinking, you know, that's, that's valid, but it was crazy because the way he said it, he's like, I've raised a black son. Like, it just came out so awkward. And like I said, I get it. Like, I understand what his intentions were. It just came out really weird. Um, Inslee, um, he, he's very, um, one issue candidate. Um, and it's not good enough. Um, while, you know, you know, climate change is absolutely, um, you know, a priority, um, it, it shouldn't be the only thing you talk about. Um, and, and that's, I actually had to block Insley, believe it or not, <laughs> like, because he kept coming on my page. I don't even know how he knows who I am. He just kept coming on my page and saying, like, you should join our campaign. We fight for climate change and blah, 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 blah. I couldn't take it anymore. This was like an every other day thing. And I blocked him. I couldn't take it anymore. Um, so, Tim Ryan, the only thing I appreciate that Tim Ryan said um, was when they were talking about um, school shootings, Tim Ryan made a very valid point that we don't just have to invest in, you know, people were talking about like, you know, like security and this and that. He said it, we also need to invest in, um, counselors and stuff for each school because a lot of the, the kids who shoot and stuff are very bullied and that's a really valid statement. That doesn't mean the way they act out is right. Of course it's not. But these kids, you know, I was bullied like crazy growing up. And I had no one to talk to. So I know how, I can't even fathom how much it would have helped me um, to be, to have had a counselor in school um, to actually talk to. Uh, you know, that would, it would have been pretty life-changing. So I think that was extremely valid and a really good point, um, that, you know, there needs to be more self-care in, in school as well. Um, I watched, uh, there's a, a teacher in Baltimore and, um, he, oh, sorry guys. I've been up since six and I worked nine hours, but <laughs> anyway, so one of the things I found incredibly beautiful is there's in, in Baltimore, there is a elementary school who, if you get punished or you need some kind of like disciplinary action, they send you to do yoga with a yoga teacher and you practice breathing exercises and different poses and things like that and you can also take your kids there just by choice and the teachers and parents were saying just the most incredible things like their you know their ADHD has lessened um you know they're they're less irritable um it it's just incredible and I'm like oh my god why didn't I think of this this is brilliant I mean just because kids, you can make a game out of it, you know, and they'll do it, but it's just, it, 
it was such an amazing idea and I thought my god that would be that would just I think it would change like a lot of people um Bernie Bernie <laughs> um my mom okay that's jacked up but uh you know what my mom is a Bostonian she was Boston she went to Catholic school her whole life and she's 74 so <laughs> she and she still has a hardcore Bostonian accent ac the accent I mean hardcore and you know she tells me about all these things like the one time she stepped in um in uh, dog poo uh, when she was walking to, to school like it's her fault you know but and she didn't realize it was there and she put her foot up on the back of someone's <laughs> on the back of someone's um chair leg and and the poop got on the chair leg in front of her and the nun came over and she you know took the ruler and uh she, my mom's like, then she stuck me in a drawer. And I was like, oh, wait, what? And she goes, she stuck me in a drawer. <laughs> so apparently the nun literally opened a desk drawer, made my mom sit in it, put gum on her nose and a dunce hat on for the rest of the day. <laughs> she sat in a drawer. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was, like, crying when she told me this. It was so damn funny. But you know what's jacked up? Like, some of them were really, really fucked up. Because, like, my mom said that sh there were some little boys in her class who they used to dress up like babies with bibs and bonnets and little girl dresses <laughs> and make them walk home like that, even if they live, like, five miles away. And that way they'd have to walk the whole way home while people laughed and pointed and, and stuff like that. And it could have been for anything. Um, yeah, but I don't know. When my mom said she stuck me in a drawer, like, I lost it. I just lost it. It was great. Um, so, anyway, I got way off topic. Um, Castro, um... Yeah, I think, um, oh, Booker talk, Booker complained about Big Pharma. That was lovely, considering that's one of the reasons many people didn't vote for his ass, because he took a lot of money from Big Pharma and voted against Bernie's, um, bill to put a cap on prescription prices. Uh, so... Yeah, it was just, it was a lot of BS, honestly. We need to, to do a better job of educating people um, and, you know, telling them, you know, bringing up receipts from the past. Look, if she didn't sign this legislation a few months ago, why should we believe that she's sincere now? I want Warren to come out and say, look, I had a really big epiphany, and this is why I, hey, cool, bring it. I love when people evolve, but you're not going to hear them say that. You're not going to hear them say, well, I was a little different on this a year ago, but when I did more research, I learned, like, that's human. I embrace that. I get it. We've all changed, but when you make no statement like that whatsoever and you know damn right well the MSM is not going to ask them why did you change um you know we're we're never going to know um oh anna you are so right no I, yeah well you're right a year yeah, a year is nothing. They, you know, um, the, um, the climate action kids are protesting the DNC right now, um, trying to get them to have a climate debate. 
They say they're having 12 debates, but they refuse to do a climate debate. My guess is because last November they agreed that they would, the DNC agreed they would stop taking fossil fuel money and then less than a month later reneged and started taking it again. Um, literally about three weeks later. So, um, the, right, right. Excuse me. It was bad. Um, but yeah, the Sunshine Movement kids are protesting the DNC. So, Bernie's campaign sent them pizzas. Um, which he did countless times, um, to long voter lines, um, in, um, uh, in 2016 when we had to wait in six hour voting lines and stuff. We always, always, always sent pizzas. Always. It, it, we called it pizza for Bernie. It was like a movement. Then even after the election, all throughout 2017, 2018, we still, like, anyone protesting in in D.C. or anything for anything, Bernie was always sending pizza. It just, it was a thing. I don't know. It's just, and it's not just about pizza and being able to, you know, reinvigorate them and be like, here, take some more energy. You got this. It's, it's the fact that he's saying this is solidarity. I'm encouraging you to keep going. You might leave because you're hungry. Don't leave. Here's some food. Stick around. What you're doing is important. Um, so the message behind that I think is so powerful, especially for these kids. Um, and, you know, looking in these comments or like, you know, where'd you, where'd you get the money to pay for that pizza? And, you know, all this stuff. It was, oh my it's like, look, if he uses my donation for it, I don't give a flying fuck. And I don't know anyone else who would. Like, seriously, if you want to take our donations to encourage young people to get active, I'm okay with that. <laughs> seriously. But, um, yeah, anything to complain about him for, um... Yeah, they were like, oh, are those pizzas in a cardboard box? Like, you know, just, just being total contrary assholes. And, um, you know, it's just so sad. It's like, look, I'm sorry your candidate would never think to do something so kind. But, you know, this guy's pretty legit. So, um, yeah. Absolutely, Cindy. And, you know, I was lucky enough to go to um, Bernie's birthday party in September. And you guys would not believe the amount of love in Vermont for that man. Like, I was wearing Bernie shirts and people were coming up and hugging me. Locals. Just saying, oh, you're here for Bernie. Oh my god, oh my god. He's the best. He comes here and pickets with us all the time. Um, he comes to our meetings. Um, I had nurses coming up to me who says, you know, they they couldn't have a nurses union without him. And, you know, I mean, and of course I ran into him there too. He was buying vegetables. Um, but people there love him. And, oh, you're from Vermont? Yay. Yeah, they keep voting him in. Like, last primary 2018, he got 95% of the vote. Who has been a rep in their state for, like, decades and still gotten 95% of the vote? They love him. And it's really freaking beautiful. He literally just got most popular politician for the 12th year in a row. That's freaking, that's pretty freaking insane. 12 years. Um, so there's a reason, you know, why people, you know, people don't want him. And that's the reason we all should. Um, the way, you know, the corporate media is 
praising Warren right now should be an eye opener to people um because they'll never praise Bernie and like he said I welcome their hatred I know he's so great and I you know to be quite honest with you I really and like cuz I fantasized about meeting him so many times and the first time I met him I was really surprised because I for some reason I really thought he was going to smell like Vicks Vapo rub. I don't know what it was. I just I really had a feeling he was going to. So, but he actually smells really good. Like super good. Like not like Vicks Vapo rub. He smells good. Um but yeah, the so I've been fortunate enough to to meet Bernie five times now and I've been to 10 of his rallies, one of his town halls and his birthday party. Um, so, I'm a, officially a grumpy grandpa groupie, so, um, but yeah, uh, Turdway, which was trending, um, is all out attacking Bernie, um, and they're essentially, um, essentially the new, um, well, they're like Cap, essentially, they want... Um, you know, they want nothing progressive. They want corporate money. They want, um, you know, uh, they don't want Medicare for all. They don't want to stop taking oil money. They're the antithesis of, of everything we, you know, of everything we support. Um, so you know, and they are praising the hell out of Warren. And they stated in an article that they support her. One of the reasons is because she'll never truly back single payer. So the fact that they said that lets me know my gut is true. And these people are going to have a really, really rude awakening because what's going to happen is they're all being duped. They're going to vote for her. She'll get into office and she will literally not do a damn thing. She has no backbone. I mean, Trump will absolutely eviscerate her. And especially on the debate stage. Um, so Bernie, you know, came out third way. He was like, look, I, he put cats out of the bag um, on Twitter and... You know, people are like, oh my god, he's so petty. Um, and and what he wrote it on actually happened to have, um, it was an article, but it ha the article ha was about all the candidates, but it happened to have a picture of Warren on the, you know, on the, the clip that showed, oh my god, you're attacking Warren, oh my god. He literally never even said her name. He was sharing the article. That's it. But, it, oh, he's sexist, he, he wants a war between Warren supporters, and it was just so pathetic. It's like, yeah, if you actually look, it's not about Warren, and he never said his name. Um, yeah, um, yeah, well, see, when I watch Warren, I kind of want to just, I'm going to get me a beer. That's what, what I feel like. Hold on here. I'm going to get me a beer. <laughs> uh, um, well, there is, uh, d um, Warren does like to do this. She, she says, well, by golly, she's been doing this whole, like, southern thing. Like, I'm from Oklahoma. Um, lately and uh so she's she's pulling that out a lot um she has also started the it's time for a woman stuff so that's always great um as far as tomorrow it should be interesting um i'm anticipating biden and bernie getting most of the attention uh, questions will be loaded against bernie no question and do you guys not think it's hilarious that, um, you know, Warren got on stage with people who were polling the lowest 
I mean, they, they would have never put Warren on the same stage as Bernie. He would have fucking destroyed her. He would have been like, really? You didn't sign on to that last year? Um, because he, he has the receipts. That was not an accident. They're going to keep separating him and Warren as long as possible. So, tomorrow night, it'll be interesting. I think Yang will probably try and steal the show. Um, well, TYT is bought. So, yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, yes, it's going to, absolutely, it's going to be, are you a socialist? Are you, what does socialism mean? Well, I've already addressed that about uh, 85 times. Yeah, she voted twice for the, um, Warren voted twice for the $717 billion Trump's war budget. That was great. Bernie said no all three times. Um, I was, see, I was counting on Tulsi to work in something when they were talking about environment and um, yes, Elizabeth Warren did. She voted two times for it. Um, I was counting on Tulsi when they were talking about environment or, um, war or something to, to make a comment about Liz Warren's, um, you know, green imperialism. You know, oh, we're, we're, she says nothing about stopping wars, only that we need to make them more green. Which is just fucking wonderful. Um, and I was hoping that, you know, Tulsi called her out on that, but she didn't. Um, but tomorrow night, we'll, we'll see what goes on. Tomorrow night, I will be back afterwards. Um, same time, same place. Um, it goes till 11 p.m. Eastern again. So, um... Yeah, I'll be on probably about 11.20 Eastern or so. Um, I have some great guests coming up, too. So, I'll be sharing those tomorrow night. And, yeah, so thank you guys for for listening uh, to me rant about um, this. I know this wasn't exactly, like, the most, uh, like, well-done show. But I just kind of like being, like you know, stupid sometimes, <laughs> and not having to think, you guys keep me sane, like, you know, I, I speak about policy and stuff so much that, like, sometimes I just like to get on camera and be like, oh my god, their facial expressions, ah, um, cause, you know, I'm only 40, so I act like I'm 10, but anyway, I definitely need to get up for, <laughs> for uh, for work and, um, five hours. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and as I said, I will see you guys tomorrow night about 11.20 um, Eastern here. Love you guys.